everybody's having an unbelievable uh, I hope everybody's having an unbelievable day to this point look this is another segment of riding with Rick uh, so you know the routine if you like what you hear if you think it's informative encouraging empowering inspiring in any way click the like button uh, click the share button subscribe and follow if you believe in the work we're doing support the work we're doing it takes resources with that being said look this is going to be another segment of riding with rick but it's going to be a little bit more on the heavier side it's a current event but it's definitely deep within uh the constructs and discussions of what's wrong inside the community that we need to be dealing with that we are absolutely neglecting uh, I received a uh, an email of an article. It's actually a couple of days, not a whole lot of press, but definitely something we need to be talking about. And that is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a black man by the name of Marcus Dariel Lofton shot and killed his estranged wife who had just had him served with divorce papers. Um, police they say within two within two days of being served uh went to her house which he, he shouldn't have been at because that was quote unquote a restraining order and went in got into an altercation with her took her gun hit her over the head when it went off she ran in another room hid locked the door he forced his way into the room as she was climbing out the room and unloaded on him killing her as she fell outside of the house he fled the scene, was but later, but was later apprehended. And there are some, you know, the underlying things. Number one is he had been arrested at the house in May for domestic violence. Uh, anybody that knows knows I am an advocate for keeping our women safe. I'm an advocate for black men. I'm a black man. I have all types of things that I fight for. My number one program is Black Men Lead, which is developing and uh, socializing young black boys to become black men and providing the wraparound services men need to develop and become who we're supposed to be. So this isn't an attack on black men. This is a discussion about what's wrong. And here's what's going to happen. Even on this video in the comment field, even, but in general, here's what's, what's going to happen. The story is going to get out black women are going to come along and say sorry sorry ass black man you know all the different things that always come out and he he, he killed a black woman he's all that he's all that he, he he doesn't need to be defended this isn't what this is about but here's the problem you can't keep going the route of having black men harm black women to the point of death come behind it and the way to address the problem is to call him all kind of names talk about how trifling this sorry is hope that he gets what he deserves if he didn't kill himself uh murder homicide hope he gets what he deserves he goes to prison which is where they want us anyway and then we go back to doing what we did you know it's not about defending him it's about understanding that we have to stop this because see he killed somebody's daughter uh and he likely killed somebody's sister, uh, somebody's mom. He killed them. And they are still suffering. She's gone, but they're still suffering. They're still having to deal with this. And now we have another black man that is where he needs to be, but definitely not in a position to do what he wants to. So we are failing in that area, and we don't want to have that discussion. It's too easy for us to complain and point fingers of blame than it is to address the issues that are confronting us. Let me let me say it another way. I am in no way ignoring or pretending that there aren't exogenous uh, forces at play and uh, ill meant uh, ill meant uh, machinations and schemes that are set up to create. Uh, devastation in the black community because it's been that way from day one. What I'm talking about is my layman and the way that I layman the internal struggle. If there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. 
we are not working on the things that we need to work on to make us stronger, to make us a formidable folk, to make us a people that can make our presence felt, to make us a people that aren't easily targeted and mishandled and openly vulnerable. We can't even get things together within our own ranks because we won't deal with our brokenness. We won't work, we won't invest. It's much easier to complain than it is to work on solutions. It's much easier to complain, complain and point fingers of blame than it is to sit up and say, what could we be doing differently? Because see, it's easy to take that grown man and talk about how evil he is. Uh, he's the epitome of evil. He's he's darkness personified. He is the worst of the worst. He's trash and all this stuff. But nobody wants to talk about the fact that he was once a young boy. See, nobody... Because, see, the moment you have to talk about that, you have to talk about the fact somewhere along the line he was failed. See, if you, you talk about the fact... If you have to address the fact that that darkness, that evil, that that uselessness that's there now, that, that little hatred towards its own people and his own self. So you, you can't have a woman like that unless you hate yourself. Now, he did it thinking he was defending his, his feelings and his honor and whatever, because it's, it, 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 it gets deeper. Let me, let, me, let me give you the whole context. Now, there's no justification for what he did, but let me give you the whole context. He got with her, he beat on her. And they're supposedly in, in Michigan or in Grand, Rap, Grand Rapids, that's supposedly this site that outs and exposes uh, men, and I'm assuming black men, maybe all men, but men who are on the down low. And some kind of way, a video of him doing uh, overt sexual acts with another man hit that channel and she found out about it and and posting on, on her vi on, on her social media page about the divorce, she added, this is why, and posted that video. He found a way to, to de delete her entire profile, then he went and killed her. Uh, first and foremost, he was living a lie. He should have just stayed in his lane. You bisexual, bro. Do things that bise bisexuals don't need to be married to heterosexual women. Bisexual women don't need to be married to heterosexual men. And there'll be some men that'll sit up and, and, and disagree with that. That's one of the problems too. We expect shit that we ain't willing to give. I ain't, I ain't the sharing type. I don't want to share with another woman either. That's just how I am. But that's a whole nother discussion, right? But here's the thing. There are definitely going to be those who are going to sit up and say she had no business putting his business out there. Well, number one, his business was already out there. She got it from another place and shared it. Number two, you can't do something to somebody. Now, sisters, I'm going I'm, I'm to call this also because your safety is your, should be your number one priority. And if this brother done proved he'll put his hands on you, don't aggravate the situation. But I get it. You you get emotional. You, you get upset. You hurt because he lied to you. He, he deceived you. He, he he told you he was something and someone he wasn't. And you literally invested your life into this cat to find out he ain't nothing close to what he said he was. So you hurt. And so you're going for the juggler the only way you know how. You can't beat him up. So you're going to go for the juggler. The problem is if he's not mature and he's proven that by what he's done to you. If he isn't emotionally intelligent, which he's proven to you by what he's done to you, he could hurt you. It's not worth it. Quietly get away from him, create distance, let him go. Live to fight another day, live to love another day. Don't put yourself out there because you can't win that war. You got a person that's willing to kill you. You're willing to post something. That's not an even exchange. That ain't close to an even exchange. He's going to probably spend the rest of his life in prison or a good portion of it, depending on what the laws are in Michigan. You can you can yap somebody in, in, in Texas and, and be out in 30 or less, uh, depending on what you plead, maybe a, a, a considerably less. Uh, but matter of fact, 
If you get 30, you'd be out 15. It's going to be more than likely considered an aggravated case, so you're going to have to do half of it before you become eligible. But, again, that, that that's the other side. So, again, he, he could literally actually walk free because I think he's like 30. He could literally walk free and she's dead. Ladies, it's not worth it. Let him go. Count it up. Learn from it. Say, I know what to look for next time and work on you so that you are at a level till you can discern what you are seeing in these men. Now, what I just said is in no way blaming her for what happened. It's just warning women, don't put yourself in situations that can bring you harm uh, for short-lived victories. That's me telling you, this is not her fault. She had a right to be angry. She had a right to fight back. But that was a war she couldn't win. It's all I'm saying. It's his fault that he harmed her. It's our fault that we got so many men like that. There are just some people that are born dark. Uh, genetically, that's possible. Especially when, with my understanding of epigenetics. I'm real careful with that because I believe everybody can change. I do. I believe you can create the right environment for the darkest person and you can bring them out. But then a person becomes so far gone after a while in an environment and in a world that literally drives them to the darkness. And that's where most of our men are in a world that literally celebrates their dark behavior. Mistakenly calls it masculinity. Mistakenly calls it power. And totally erroneously calls it respect fear is not the same as respect somebody being afraid of you is not the same as respect respect is something that draws people to you it makes them want to be around you it makes them want to grow into being what you are what you have become and we're not doing that we're not building that we're not getting anywhere and I get to these points where I talk about black men lead. I talk about the right, I mean, the right of passage and the other wraparound services, the need to build. Frederick Douglass said, look, it's easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men. And right now we're, we're trying to repair broken men and we don't have the resources. We don't have the capacity. And it's literally killer. We're literally turning our daughters over to a monster we created through our neglect. You can say what you want to say. You can make it how you want to be. But we need to change. And here's the thing. We need to create a national network to where every city has a rite of passage that is teaching a universal idea of black manhood. We need to standardize black manhood. We need to know what we're demanding from our men. We need to know as men what's expected of us. We need to be holding one another accountable. And that is exactly what I'm pushing for. Uh, I have not really been pushing the black man lead you uh, individually. I've been talking about supporting uh, the Odyssey Project, but we need some support for the black man lead. We need some support for uh, we need some support for uh, the work we're doing in the community. We not only need a national network, we need a universal uh, understanding and definition of black manhood, but we also need people who are willing to man and operate these national network headquarters and in and, uh, and, and places. I'm doing everything in my power to push this thing. I created Black Man Lead, man, almost 20 years ago now. And it was because I discovered that when you properly racially socialize a young black male, they grow up uh, to be less inclined to violence, less inclined to criminality, less inclined to drop out of school, more inclined to uh, develop the skill set to have a living wage. That's important. Not just have a job, but a living wage, meaning they can support a family. So important right now because that's a part of the problem. We don't have we don't have a family structure and we don't have a prioritization of family anymore. The family structure is suffering so massively. So again, this is just one thing in many that we're going to have to confront and deal with if we truly, really want to do something 
that is going to actually have an impact making we can talk black empowerment all we want to we can talk all the stuff we we have a widening wealth gap we have so many things going on because we haven't dealt with the issues at the surface we haven't dealt with the foundational issues that are working to move against us we have problems so on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. And I'm not even done. i got another thing that, that I'm going to talk to you uh, uh, about a little later. Uh, again, we are losing the war because we are neglecting our own responsibilities. But in the box, you're going to see a link that you can give to normally. But you're also going to see the link to support Black Man Lead and sponsor uh young black males are sponsor the programs but we also need you if you're in a city and you don't have a black rite of passage reach out we need to start building this network uh we need we can't wait on people to support it we got to start building it uh and i'm not waiting so if you believe in what we're talking about if you believe the research if you believe what's going on because the kids that i do have contact with we're making a difference i mean significant difference it is the difference between night and day and i'm talking about a bunch of these kids i got rough necks when they came along and it's amazing what what happens when you discover who you are when you all of a sudden have a true identity that's yours that gives you a brighter future. You'd be surprised how many ki kids talking about they, they kill and they're ready to be killed and then realize they got some value and all of a sudden their life means something to them. Now they're not ready to just sacrifice it for anything. You'd be surprised at, at how less inclined they are to harm other people who look like them. You'd be surprised, but it's up to us to create that long before they get to that point. On that note, look, I'm gonna get out of here. We're gonna be talking about this because we gotta change it. Uh, my prayers go out to the family of Alicia um, um, okay, Lofton. Uh, Alicia Danielle Lofton is her name. Prayers go out to her and her family. Uh, keep her lifted. But we've got to do something about this. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable.